Well, we come now to our Bible reading. If you've got a Bible to hand, do grab it. Today is the first Sunday of Lent, and so we're starting a new sermon series. We're looking at spiritual disciplines throughout Lent, and this morning Lloyd's going to be speaking to us about confession. Our reading comes from 1 John. It's 1 John chapter 1, verse 5 to chapter 2, verse 2, and it's read for us this morning by Grant. Morning. Today's reading is taken from 1 John chapter 1, starting at verse 5. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not within us. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Good morning and uh, lovely to be with you again at Holy Trinity in Rudgwick. If you don't know me, my name is Lloyd. I'm the youth worker here, and it's a privilege to be uh, sharing in God's Word with you today. We are starting a new series on spiritual disciplines. Um, it's my pleasure to kick that off uh, with us this morning. Now, if you think about why they're called spiritual disciplines, it should be no surprise that these are things that don't necessarily come easily to us. They are things that don't perhaps come naturally. They are things um, that need discipline uh, in order to practice them. And we have to practice them in order to get better at them. But there's another reason why they're called disciplines. We often think of someone's discipline as being their uh, career field or their field of study. And that means it's something that is valuable. The spiritual disciplines are things that um, will truly enhance our lives if we can get our heads and our hearts around them. They will improve us in some way. It takes discipline, if you think about it, to live a healthy life. Uh, living a healthy life includes things like um, exercise. It includes um, taking care of the, what we, about what we eat, uh, about getting enough sleep at night. All of these things require discipline. In a similar, similar way, our relationship with God, if we value it, is something that requires discipline. It's something that we want to get better at. Okay, so having said that, let, it, let us turn our hearts and our thoughts to our first discipline in this series. Um, one of the things that's worth thinking about when we talk about spiritual disciplines is that the disciplines don't save us. We're not trying to earn favor with God or earn a special place of standing. We're just trying to draw closer to Him. Now, having said that, it's also worth mentioning that the first discipline we're going to talk about is one of the ones that does have a bearing on a relationship with God. And that's because it's the discipline of confession. So what is confession? Confession literally means to speak the same, confession. In other words, it means to agree with God about the wrongness of our sin. Confession is bringing out into the open what is already present, but hidden. When you think about it, it's quite a comical thing to try and hide something from God. Now, those of you that have been worshipping with us for some time know that we recently just finished a uh, series on the book of Jonah. And in that story, we find a man who tried to run from God. Uh, and of course, that was never going to receive, to, to be successful, sorry. Um, but 
you and I, although we may not uh, buy a ticket to Tarshish, we may not be trying to go in the opposite direction, literally, of what God has for us, but we do employ similar tactics when it comes to trying to hide ourselves from God. Now, you've probably heard the quote before, confession is good for the soul. And this is one of those sayings that is absolutely true. I've got no way to qualify that or to try and alter it in any way. Confession is indeed good for the soul. In our, in our reading, John compares confession to shining a light in the darkness. Now, I want you just to imagine with me for a moment. Maybe you want to close your eyes and picture a scene. I want to imagine with me a dark room or a dark house. Perhaps you've just gotten home from an evening meeting or you've been at a uh, a dinner party. Remember those? We haven't had any of those recently, but perhaps you've been out and you've just come home. It's dark outside. What is the first thing that you do when you walk through the door? I'd venture to say that for 100% of us listening right now, the first thing we do is turn on the light. And then I want you to think about what happens to the darkness when we turn on the light. Where does it go? You see, the darkness completely dissipates when the light is shined into it. Darkness is not the opposite of light, as we sometimes think. It is merely the absence of it. Wherever light does not exist, there you have darkness. So where the light is, darkness cannot be present. And so confession is the act of agreeing with God about the wrongness of our sin and bringing our darkness into the light of God's mercy. When we confess our sins to God, surrendering to him, the darkness dissipates. It completely disappears. As we alluded to at the very beginning of this talk, confessing, confession is necessary to our salvation. It's the only discipline I can think of in which that is the case. It actually plays a crucial role in our salvation because we cannot be forgiven if we have not confessed our sins. How can we uh, be forgiven by God and experience his grace and mercy if, if we have not simply acknowledged that we need his grace and mercy because of our sinful ways? I want to share with you a beautiful quote I found from a writer called Lori Hampton. She writes, Grace is never withheld from us or hidden. We are playing a solitary game of hide and seek, but God does not hide from us or play games. We can remove our blinders, the cloak of deception, by confessing our sin. The free and undeserving gift of grace, which can take the form of God's forgiveness, allows us to share in the divine life of Christ. It is the gift of life, a gift open to us through confession. And then she goes on to explain a pattern of confession. And I find this really helpful. So I'm going to share with you three things about confession. So if you're sitting here and you're wondering, yeah, I hear this. I understand it's important. But what does it actually mean to confess our sins? Well, let's talk about that. The first thing is confession means an awareness of my sin and tendency to do wrong. Part of our regular prayer time should include confession. Some days we might come to God with a long list of things to confess. Other times we might need to start with a listening prayer, asking God to show us areas of unconfessed sin. Sometimes I may not be aware of the ways in which I have done wrong to the Lord. The second thing, have a conversation with God about your sin. We need to be comfortable telling God our truth. What do I mean by that? It doesn't bother God for you to be honest with him. In fact, as we alluded to earlier, he knows already. Confession is the act of telling him your sins, your truth. It's the act of getting those things out of the darkness and into the light. It's an admission of wrong. Confession simply means to agree with God about the facts of our sinful life. And I, if I can be honest with you for just a moment, if there's one thing in my own life that has really uh, improved, uh, I would say even transformed my walk with Christ in recent years, it has been this, learning to have an open and raw honesty with God about where I really am. 
in my spiritual life, in my desires, in my heart. Just being really open and raw with God. Not necessarily with anyone else, but just with him. And we'll come back to that thought in just a moment. Thirdly, uh, what we are doing by confession is we are choosing to receive God's grace. It is a beautiful thing when we recognize how our sin blinds us to the grace of God. But by accepting the gift of grace through forgiveness, we experience true freedom. Now, we've been talking about confession to God, but is there room for confession to others? Some branches of Christianity place a lot of emphasis on confession to others, and I must admit they're not entirely wrong. James tells us in chapter 4, confess your sins to one another that you may be healed. You see, confession brings life. It restores our souls to a right relationship with God. It frees us from the shackles of shame and guilt, and it brings us into communion with God the Father. What a glorious gift we find in the practice of confession. Now, as we draw to a close, it's worth asking ourselves a few questions. Am I really being honest with God about my own condition? Are there hidden sins known to God, but that we've been trying to hide from him? Now, I'm not asking anyone to engage in self-loathing, I'm just asking us to take an honest look at our hearts. It's easy to engage in self-deception. I know this for a fact. I've practiced it many times. It's easy to lie to ourselves about where we really stand with God and not take a look at the hard facts. But so John, the good news is John tells us that we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. So the question for you and I is, have we taken advantage of this gift? Have we truly received it? It's wonderful that we make time for confession each week during our worship services, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Why wouldn't we shine the light of God's grace into our lives every day? not just in a worship service on Sundays. You see, confession is truly good for the soul. Why? Because in confession, we find God's grace and forgiveness. We also find, however, not just that initial grace and forgiveness, but we find that as we confess our sins to God, it empowers us and gives us freedom to walk in new life in Christ. As we confess our sins, God imparts his grace to us through the Holy Spirit to live life in new ways, in ever increasingly godly ways. Why wouldn't we want that? Think about that for a moment. Why wouldn't I want everything that God has for me? Perhaps God's stirring in your heart now, and I'd like to encourage you to Uh, Reach out to someone for prayer. As you know, after our services, the prayer ministry team meet. Uh, You should have information about that in your email. If not, uh, do get in touch. Maybe you could phone someone for a chat and a prayer. But I do encourage you to reach out uh, to someone and most importantly to reach out to our Heavenly Father who is waiting for us always to come home to Him. Let's pray now. Father, thank you for your liberating truth that confession brings us out of darkness and into the light. Lord, I pray for everyone who is hearing these words now that we would stop hiding from you and return to the loving arms of God our Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I hope you continue to walk with the Lord and that God blesses you in the days to come. Well, having heard Lloyd talk about confession, it seems appropriate now that we turn to confession. In our reading from John's first epistle, we heard that if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. John goes on to say that if we confess our sins, he, that's God, is faithful and just. He will uh, forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 
In a few moments time there are going to be words on the screen which we'll say together. They'll be familiar to many of us, they're the words we often say at church and I've deliberately chosen a familiar confession. I want words where we're able to concentrate on really what they mean rather than tripping over what we're saying or having unfamiliar words. But it's worth just spending a few moments just to think about those words and their meaning. That we have sinned. We have sinned against God and we have sinned against our neighbour. And we've done it in a number of ways. We've done it in the things we've thought about. We've done it in the words we've used and said. And we've done it in the things we've done indeed. But not only that, we've done it sometimes through negligence because we weren't really realising. Sometimes through weakness. We knew we shouldn't have done it. But we've done it all the same. And sometimes we've done it through our own deliberate fault. So with that in mind, let's turn and say these familiar words which will be on the screen. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, in confessing our sins, in asking God for his forgiveness, we cling simply to Christ and his work for us on the cross, which broke the power of sin and darkness. Themes which are picked up in our final song and hymn this morning. At our contemporary service, we're going to sing the song, This is Amazing Grace. At our traditional, our even song service, we're going to sing the hymn, Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me.